We acknowledge this land that we meet on today is the traditional lands for the Bagana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. We also pay respects to the cultural authority of Aboriginal people visiting or attending from other areas of South Australia and Australia present here. And without further ado, I will stop sharing my screen and I will hand over to the wonderful Tisha Richmond. So Tisha works for Canva. She will introduce herself um, and her role, but this is the fourth session that she's done with us this year. Um, and we're very happy to have her back to present this series on Canva Champion, Train the Trainer. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's always a joy to be with you. I love coming in and sharing with all of you any time of the day. So this is the Train the Trainer series, and this is going to be session one, and we're going to be focused on the student learner journey today. And I, I want to start by introducing myself for those of you who have not been to, in, to the other sessions that I have facilitated. My name is Tisha Richmond, and I am a Canva Learning Consultant. I have been a learning consultant for about a year and a half now, and I am the newly appointed Global Community Manager for Canva for Education as well. So I'm I'm splitting my time uh, for both roles. And so I am building community and creating content for the Facebook community on Canva teachers, for Canva teachers, and then also the Twitter community. And so definitely join both Facebook or Twitter if either one of those platforms are platforms that you um, are on. And you also can find me in a variety of other places too. You can find me by email, I also have my own handles on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I have been in education for 25 plus years. Most of those years were in the career and technical education classroom. So I taught culinary arts, I taught interior design. I also was a tech integration specialist in my district, supporting 20 schools in integrating technology and also uh, served as a student engagement and professional development specialist in the district as well. So I've spent lots of time in classrooms K through 12 uh, in the United States. And I've loved seeing all of those different grade levels and how they learn and, and helping bring Canva into those grade levels too. And I will say that I have facilitated learning experiences from kinder, so five-year-olds all the way up through 12th grade. And every student loves Canva. So I'm really excited to share with you today. I am I'm tuning in from Southern Oregon. So I am on Pacific Standard Time right now. And we are in the, the hottest part of the summer here in Oregon. So climate a little bit different than where you all are. So I would like to start, and I believe that uh, Abigail might have a, uh, a poll on where your comfort level is with Canva. So I would just like you zero through five, and you can join in that poll. Where is your comfort level? Zero being never logged in. This is your very first introduction to Canva all the way to move on over. I think I could give this presentation. I use it so much. Oh, I love this, uh, this background. This is cool. Great. So we have a lot of you who are in the occasional user to the frequent user range. We have some that have logged in, but just that's kind of it. And we have um, a couple that are almost never users as well. So I hope that no matter what level you are in your comfortability with Canva, that you come away today really excited and with some ideas that you're gonna be able to bring into your classroom because there are so many different ways that you can use Canva for learning. And um, I'm excited to, to jump in. So you all have this resource and this is a one page website that I created for you that includes the presentation deck. It includes a participant guidebook that you're going to be uh, going into this session as well. It also has some collaborative activities that we're going to be participating in together using a Canva whiteboard. And then I also included teacher resources as well as all of the different ways that you can connect with me and connect with the Canva community. So this would be a great resource to keep 
uh, up, maybe uh, the tab bookmarked on your browser so that you can get to it easily, but you will want to reach some of these links during our session today too. So make sure that that is on hand. So we are actually gonna start right away by going into that present, that one page that I just shared with you. And what I'm gonna have you do is go to where it says participant guide in that one page website. I'm sorry, collaborative activities. You're gonna click on collaborative activities. And when you go into collaborative activities, you are going to see some pages here. And this is basically what we call a collaborative whiteboard presentation. So this is a presentation design, but we expanded each page out into a whiteboard. And you'll notice that as everyone is kind of popping into this whiteboard, we're splashing into the top. So you see everybody splashing up here on top and we see everybody's cursors. And so we, what I love about this is we see your entire name and everybody has different colors so it's really easy to navigate where everybody is within the whiteboard too whiteboards are a great opportunity to kind of get students thinking and brainstorming and sharing ideas in class it's a great opening activity to a lesson and so what i want you to do is i want you to find an emoji or a giphy if you have access to your giphys of just sharing how you're feeling right now. I know it's the end of a day. Um, it is the end of kind of your winter months. So you might have a lot of different emotions that you are feeling right now. And I would love for you just to share. So for those of you who are fairly new to Canva, I wanna share with you two different ways that you can find this emoji or Giphy. One is by going into your elements. It's the second tab down here on your sidebar. And we can go in here and we could look at either stickers and I could find stickers that are going to show an emoji. So I could find happy. And I could also find, so I could go in here this way. I could even type in the word emoji and different emojis are gonna come up. And then also when I go into my app, so I have a couple different options. We actually have an emoji and I want to verify that this is turned on. Some districts don't have it turned on, but if you do, you will find it in your apps. And when you click on it, there's a little purple bar. The very first time you use emojis, you have to open it. And then there's another app that is called Giphy that you might have as well. And this could, it would allow you to bring in a Giphy or a GIF of your emotion. So spend some time looking for an emoji or some type of a representation of how you're feeling right now. I see you're all having, you have no problem finding these. We have lots of them. And what I love is that we have quite a few happy faces. We have one that I think is feeling a little frustrated today. We have some starry eyes and we have, oh, I love that little, um, this one with all the little hearts kind of going in a, in a row there. That's very cool. We have somebody that feels like eating watermelon. I love it. That's fantastic. Um, we just got someone with their hand up. Emma, did yes. you want to come off mute if you've got a question? Otherwise, you can type it in the chat, or it might be a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. Um, I can get into the collaborative activity, but how are you guys? like watching the demonstration and being in the collaborative activity at the same time. And I normally go through this on my um, slides. If you are working on one screen, it does make it a bit tricky, but if you've got a Windows machine, if you click on the Windows key and either the right or left arrow, you should yep. be able to split your screen in two and then have teams in one half of your screen and hopefully Canva in a browser in the other half of your screen. It does make it a little bit tricky, um, but hopefully that will help you a little bit. Thank you. That's, that's great advice. And also we're all, I'm looking at the same screen you are right now. So you're not seeing, so the presentation screen at the moment is exactly the same as what you're seeing too. I'm right where you're at. Okay. So 
you, you can see how this is just a great way even to do just a check in. How are you? How are your students doing? How are they feeling? This is a great way just to get students to engage at the beginning of class. And you can always also think of all of the different questions that you can ask, right? And have them respond with an emoji or a graphic or a photo. You could say um, even something as simple as what is your favorite food? just to get your students talking and engaging and collaborating and getting used to collaborative activities in class. Also, I want you to know that I locked certain pieces of this whiteboard. So you can notice that when I click on this uh, little um, bar up on top with the sentence in it, that it shows a lock. That means it can't be moved. So if you want certain things in your whiteboard um, fixed, so that it, it is not movable, you are able to fix those things by simply clicking on them. And then there will be three little dots that will appear. And then you can click it in place. So for instance, if I wanted to click this little watermelon in place up here, when I click on it, you can see that there's three little dots. I can go down to lock. And now that watermelon is locked and it can't be moved. So you are all very good at this. I love that you just jumped in so quickly and added those emojis and those gifts. And we're gonna continue collaborating throughout our time together. And you'll notice that there are a variety of pages here. So the next page that we're all gonna be jumping into is going to be the executive functioning. We're not ready to go there yet, but I just want to kind of alert you to what will be coming next so that you'll be ready when we get there. So I'm gonna go back into my presentation view in Canva, and we are going to just talk about what our time is gonna be like together today. Today's learner journey is going to start with executive functioning and activating prior knowledge. And there are so many different ways that we can help our students with executive functioning and so many ways that we can help them activate prior knowledge in Canva for Education. And so we're gonna spend some time there and then we're going to have some time for you to explore some templates and for you to think about creation. Because what I want to leave you with today is a plan for creating something for your classroom learning, something for your students that they can engage in. And for those of you who come back to session two, you'll have an opportunity to share some of those things that you were able to create um, since you know this session. And then I always love to just end with Q&A &A and uh, some resources that you'll be able to extend your learning in Canva. As always, please ask questions throughout. Um, Abigail is um, so kind to moderate for me. And so if those questions come up, um, I'm not maybe going to see the hands coming up on the screen. So definitely alert me and I will be happy to answer and address those questions as, as we go. So how can Canva be used to capture the student learning journey? journey, journey? <laughs> My tongue is tied. It's, it's, the, it's the night. I always can blame it on night uh, when, I'm, when I'm zooming in with all of you. But we are going to start with executive functioning. And I'm going to show you how Canva can be used to support executive functioning. And there's a lot of ways. But I think one of the really, um, one, one great way to show and help your students with executive functioning in Canva is through digital notebooks. And you can create these digital notebooks in Canva very easily and bring in any types of pages that you want to. So when you are wanting to help your students with goal setting, really helping them stay accountable, setting those goals for you know, the semester or the quarter ahead, wanting them to really think about what they're aspiring to achieve. You can find these goal setting sheets in Canva and you can have students put them in a digital notebook where they, they can track those goals throughout the year, throughout the school year. There also are a lot of student planner pages in Canva. And so you can go in and you can find planning pages and put those planning pages in a digital notebook as well. I know for myself, whenever I go to the store at the beginning of a calendar year and I'm or a school year and I try to find a planner for myself, I always struggle because many times those planners aren't quite set up the way that my brain works and how my day works. And so students now can go in and they might find a planner page that's almost right, but they can go in and they can change it. They can move things around so it works well for them 
and they can personalize it. They can add their own colors. They can change fonts. They can add their own personalized graphics in there as well and be able to keep those planning pages. So you can help your students stay organized, help them track their progress, really increase that student responsibility and help them be better communicators too of um, their, their organization and their plans. Habit trackers are also in Canva and there are quite a few of them. At the bottom of these screens, you're gonna notice that there are some search terms that are going to be key search terms to use when you're looking for these things. So for habit tracker, you just simply type in habit tracker. For student planner, you'll type in student planner to that search. And for goal setting, you would type in goal setting. Habit trackers are great because it really helps students practice those executive functioning skills and really support students that struggle with those. So you can help students identify what are the things that you really they really want to keep track of that maybe they're struggling with. Maybe it is bringing their devices. If you're bringing, if your um, school has devices coming in and out of school each day, maybe it's just to keep track of keeping your devices charged, right? Or maybe for some students, it might be eating breakfast every morning or drinking enough water. So you can ha help students think about what those things are that they want to make a habit of, and you can help them keep track of those in a digital notebook form. So any of these pages could be compiled in a digital notebook that they are going back to throughout the school year on a daily basis to really be able to manage um, their, their days. I love this idea of a vision board, and I think it's important for students to really think about what their, what their aspirations are, what are their goals, and then help them achieve those things. And there are lots of vision boards in the Canva template library that you can use as a starting point for students to really start thinking about those goals and aspirations. Another thing that is great to do, um, I know you're not at the beginning of a school year right now, but at the beginning of a school year, you could do an about me board. And so instead of a vision board, maybe you have students share out their favorite things, the things that they love. And that way, as you are building relationships in the classroom with your students, you are going to get to know a little bit about them, the things that they love, things that maybe represent them. And that will give you some conversation starters as you go through the year to know what to talk to them about because they're sharing with you some of the things that they really love. What I love about the vision board and the about me idea as well is you could have them do this in a collaborative way where maybe you create a design and maybe it's a presentation design and you create a you bring in a vision board or an about me template and then you just duplicate that template as many times as you have students in that class so if you have 27 students in the class you duplicate that about me or that vision board 27 times and then you bring them into that presentation collaboratively you give them edit access and now every student is claiming a page and they get to they get to um complete their vision board or their about me and then you could have them share that as a class i think this works really well especially for about me's so your students can get to know each other and you can get to know them as well so we are going to go back to that collaborative activity again and we are now going to be on page two and what i would like you to do and so when you you can see at the bottom of your screen that your pages are probably in a tray if they're not if you click on this little arrow right above the tray it changes and th that tray is hidden so if you're not seeing the tray at the bottom click that little arrow and the tray is going to appear and again we're going to be on page two and what i would like you to do is bring in a post-it note and share your thoughts, maybe your ideas, your questions about what I just shared with you. If you're new, again, to the whiteboards, if you go to elements, it's the second tab down on the left-hand side, those post-it notes or sticky notes are going to be right up on front. And so you can click any one of these post-it notes and it's going to, it's going to come into this whiteboard. 
Notice also that these sticky notes have your names on them, which is really helpful for the teacher because you can see exactly who is putting which sticky note where. Another important thing to know about whiteboards is they're, they're infinite. We do not run out of room. So if you're looking at my screen right now, notice how I can, just with my mouse, I can make this smaller or I can make it bigger. I also can go down to the bottom of my screen here and there is a little scroll bar that lets me go in or go out. And if I ever get lost, because this is an infinite space, I can simply go to this little percentage down here where it says Zoom. And when I click on it, I can click on Fit and it's gonna pop it right back front and center again so that if I get lost, I can get right back where I started from. Now, you do not need to stick to the pink uh, borders of this board. You, you can go off to the side. We are not gonna run out of room, so there's no need to try to fit everybody on that board. Go off to the side, add your thoughts anywhere that you would like. I love how interactive everybody is and all of the idea sharing right here. I am going to set my timer at the bottom of the screen for one more minute because you are off and uh, already adding so many great ideas. Notice too that with my timer, I can also add music. So if I wanted to add some upbeat music, I could click upbeat. We might need some upbeat music at this time of the day. And then I can click play. And I'm going to play that music. So you have 50, 55 seconds left to add your ideas. I love all of these ideas and the questions that you all are um, sharing. There's some great things here. Um, I have some questions. Can um, you can move each other's notes around? Is there any way to, you can only be able to move your own notes? No, however, you can lock things. You can lock things in place, but it would be hard um, in this kind of a situation, you wouldn't want to go around locking everybody's notes in place. So what I typically do is is just lock the the template that I want on the page in place and then allow the movement of everything else. And it's a conversation like any time you bring students into a collaborative space like this, there is there is lots of digital citizenship that needs to be taught and just sharing how we all are going to function in a collaborative activity like this, um, really talk about what the expectations are. And it's gonna be messy probably the first couple of times you do it. And so that's why I always like to start with something kind of fun like we did at the beginning that's low entry point. It's not a high cognitive demand. It's okay to fail, it's okay to be messy. And then as students gain that responsibility and do better in a collaborative ex experience, then you can increase that cognitive load. Really good question. Um, I'm wondering how you set up the interactive collaborative activities and get students to join. That's a really good question. So when I do the whiteboards, I love to do this in a presentation. So instead of going in and opening up a whiteboard, I actually, when I'm in the uh, template library or I'm creating a design, I actually, I actually open up a presentation. And then what happens is at the bottom of your pages, there's three little dots and those three little dots allow me to either collapse the whiteboard so it goes back to a normal presentation slide or it allows me to expand that whiteboard. So now I'm going to be able to take that normal presentation slide and turn it into a whiteboard. And what I like about this, just like we're doing here today together, is I don't have to share with you five different links to five different whiteboards. All of those whiteboards are in one space. So it's really easy to get students to, to move from one board to another. Also note that I could 
um, lock pages. So if I wanted to lock that first page, I could lock it. When you are sharing this with students, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to your share button up here. You want to make sure that you are opening the link up to the team your students are on. So this would most likely say your school team. You would want to make sure you are clicked on that. I need to click it to anyone because you're not on my team. And then you can click on can edit. Can edit is going to bring students in in a collaborative way. If you were to share this as can view, they would get to see the whiteboard, but they would not be able to engage in it. Uh, one thing to know also is that you can change from one to another. So if you had them, you shared the link given edit access, you can, after that activity is over, change it to view only. And then when students refresh their screen, they're not going to be able to come into that whiteboard anymore. You can freeze it as well. But that is how you would do it. So you would just copy that link and then you would share that link wherever you are going to share your links with students, whatever that learning management system and that workflow looks like. Great question. We've, we've got another question in the Teams chat. Um, they're just wondering where you got the timer from. Can you demonstrate that one, one yes. more time? Thank you. Absolutely. So timers are located at the bottom of your whiteboards and they, you don't have to, um, they're just there natively. So if, when I click down at the bottom on timer, a timer is going to pop up. So you can see I'm just clicking that little hand is on the very bottom of my screen here. I click it, it, it comes up, I click it again and it goes away. And then when I hover over that timer, that is where I'm able to bring in the music. I can even turn the music off if I want to. And I can also increase the minutes. So as your students are working and you're realizing, oh, I need more time, you can add more time. And you can also take away time if you find that, you know, they're slowing down with their sharing and you might not need as much time as you thought you would. I love it. Okay. Is there a way to support student cooperation and responsibility to others? Ideas, the lock, is there a way for the teachers to change the settings like that on mass? So again, and I think I might've answered this already, um, just you know, locking certain things in place. Anything you click on, there's gonna be three little dots that come up and you can lock it in place, but um, it wouldn't really be feasible to lock everybody's notes. So you have to kind of think about what you wanna lock and what you don't want to lock. All right, I think I lots of great comments, ideas. I don't, I think I got all of the questions. Um, someone asked, do we have activities aimed at senior school students, students getting ready for employment? So the template marketplace, when you go into the homepage of Canva, uh, allows you to type in certain ser search words and you're going to find templates for those. You can also search by grade level preschool all the way through 12th grade. And so once you go to that grade level, then you can filter down and look for things like employment or specific, uh, maybe employment ready templates that you want to look for. There are thousands, 70,000 education templates in the Canva library and 610,000 templates that go beyond that. So resumes would be one that wouldn't be education specific, but would definitely get students employ employment ready. And so, yes, you absolutely will be able to find them. In fact, just today, my son who lives in New York City is applying for a shift lead position at a coffee shop. And I got on Canva with him and I helped him update his resume and I helped him write a cover letter. And that was all, all done in Canva. So real world experience just happened to happen today. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the presentation now. Keep sharing your ideas. If you wanna stay in that collaborative space and continue your thoughts, please do that. But we're gonna be moving on to activating prior knowledge. And there's lots of different ways that we can activate prior knowledge with Canva. And there's a lot of different ways that we can do it. So we could take a KWL chart and you can just search KWL in the Canva template library and you could bring this KWL chart into a whiteboard just like we have been collaborating on. And you could have your students go in and add those sticky notes to the different columns. Or there is a draw tool in Canva too. And draw is also available in whiteboards. It didn't used to be, but now it is. And so you could actually have students write 
in the whiteboard as well in the columns. You could do it as a whole class activity, or maybe you create a whiteboard activity where you have, you put students into groups. And so maybe you duplicate that whiteboard and you have five of them, just like I had multiple pages for all of you. And then you say, you know, you put certain students in certain pages. So maybe, you know, their birthdays are January through March, you're on page one. If it's April through May, you're on page two, et cetera, and have them do them in smaller groups. You could also assign this as an individual activity. So you could share a template link. Any design you create in Canva, you can create a template link of, which would give a copy to every student, and then give that to your students as well as an assignment, and they could complete this individually. So there's lots of different ways that you could do it. Also thinking about brainstorming. This is a great whiteboard activity. If you search education whiteboards in Canva, you're gonna find lots of brainstorming templates that really are set up for a variety of grade levels and a variety of subject areas. And you can go in and you can edit it however you want to. So you can change the questions, you can change the prompts, you can change the directions, you can change colors, all of that can be personalized. So really a great opportunity, again, for your students to think critically about issues, potential solutions. They're going to be able to make those connections. And they're going to be able to share those ideas with each other, which is really, really important. And it really gives your students that opportunity to express themselves without that fear of failure. And so, again, I think the more that we can get our students into these spaces to collaborate, the more comfortable they are going to be doing it. And the more, the less messy it's going to be because it's inevitable. It's going to be messy the first time you bring students in to a collaborative space like that. Um, but the more you do it, the more you set those expectations with your class, the mess, the less messy it becomes. I also love the mind map templates in Canva, and there are so many of them. And this is a great way to really help evaluate your students' conceptual growth and understanding. And again, there's so many different templates in Canva that are going to be arranged just the way that you would want to have your students um, using a mind map or, or engaging in a white in a mind map activity. Same thing with the K, as with the KWL charts and the brainstorming. You could do this as a group activity in a whiteboard, or maybe you have students in smaller groups working on this, or you could have it be individual. It really depends on what the task is, what objectives um, and standards you're wanting to meet, and you know what the how it fits into your lesson design. There are infinite possibilities. There's no right or wrong way. There's multiple ways that it can be brought in. I love this idea of a visual analysis. And what a visual analysis is is you can take a photo. So it could be a photograph that's in the template or the elements library in Canva, or it could be a photo that you have that you are uploading in from, from the internet or from your phone or wherever it might be. And you just bring that picture into the whiteboard and you just pose a question up on top. And you ask a question like, what does this image encourage us to think about? Or what emotions does this image evoke? You could ask lots of questions that really um, connect to the content that you're teaching, maybe what you want to get your students thinking about to really front load that lesson that you're going to be teaching. And then your students can go in and they, they could bring in those sticky notes and add their ideas, their thoughts. If it was what emotion does this image evoke, they could go in and grab those emojis and be able to express themselves in that way. So a great easy way to get students engaging. I would say the best way to do this is just get a white, a blank whiteboard, just a, a blank template, and then bring in that photograph that you want to use and just simply put a sentence or a question up on top. Really easy, really easy to do. And I think really um, a great, I think images are a great way to get your students thinking and talking and discussing. And so what a great way to then prompt a discussion as a class. So we're gonna go back into the whiteboard and I want you to think about these ideas that I just shared. And I'd love for you to share on page three, so we're jumping to page three now, what you're thinking about. So what ideas come to mind? 
in your grade level. I know we have some primary teachers that teach the littles and we have some high school teachers and everywhere in between. And so I think these ideas are going to look very different depending on the content area and the grade level that you teach. And so I would love for you to share those thoughts, share those ideas, because what you share and your thoughts and your ideas are most likely going to spark somebody else's ideas and give them some great um, ways that they can use these activating prior knowledge ideas in their classroom. I'm going to set my timer. It looks like it's on for one minute already. So I'm just going to go ahead and and start the clock and continue sharing. I love it. I love seeing all these Post all of these sticky notes popping onto the screen. Again, don't worry about, you can go off. We, we're not going to run out of space on this board. So you can go in any direction that you want to add your ideas. We'll turn on some music. I don't know that you've shared your sound to share because we're not hearing the music, but it's all good. I, you know what? I'm not hearing it either. I think, are you hearing it now? Do you hear that? No. Okay. Just, it's just white noise when you, when you do that. So okay. I probably uh, didn't. We just persevere thing. without okay. it. Wow, I'm loving all of your ideas. Brilliant. So finish up your thoughts. Keep writing if you're in the middle of a thought. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add one more minute to the clock. And this time what I want you to do is I want you to go down, go to elements. It's the second tab over again, just like we found the sticky notes. And I want you to go down to where you see whiteboard graphics. And I'd like you to spend a minute just reading each other's ideas. And when you see an idea that you especially like, you can give it a thumbs up or you can give it a plus one. Like, yes, I want to use that idea too. Or you might have a question and you want to add a question mark or you might want to add a star. And if you click the see all, you're going to see that there are lots of other little whiteboard graphics that pop up as well. So take some time, read your colleagues different thoughts and ideas and add a little whiteboard graphic to the corner of their sticky note to show that we uh, that you like their ideas or have questions about their ideas. Um, you can make those whiteboard graphics small so if you want to shrink them down and just put them on the edge of the white of the sticky so you can still see what people are saying. Love it. Thirty more seconds. Amazing. You all are adding such great, great ideas. Love the sharing. Love all the sticky, all of the uh, graphics you've added. Amazing. And what we'll do after this is uh, I will, you'll have this. So now then when you're thinking about, oh, there was that idea that someone shared, you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to read everybody's ideas. We'll, I'll go ahead and turn this to view only um, after the session so every, everything can stay. I love it. Thank you all so much for sharing. This is amazing. And I love that you are now, your, your, I, your mind is um, just open to all of these new ways that you can use Canva that maybe you hadn't considered before that might be a little, a little different than how you've used Canva in the past. 
And we really have only come 1% far as to what you can do to capture students learning in Canva. There are so many more ways and we're gonna be sharing even more ways when we come back together. But what I would like you to do now is I want you to go into the participant guidebook. And in the participant guidebook, you are going, I'll show you where it is right here. So it's the second uh, link down in that one pager that I gave you. And in this participant guidebook, it is going to be kind of guiding you through choosing your own learning adventure based on what we just shared with the executive functioning and activating prior knowledge. And so when you go through this guidebook, you are going to see that there are um, kind of the overview is there are, we're going to explore templates. We're going to choose a learning adventure. We're going to have some just uh, planning time and idea sharing. And then I've left you with lots of design school resources. So what I would like you to do right now is I would like you to look through some of these executive functioning templates. So when you click on in your presentation, I think you have you should have a view only when you click on each of these little little boxes it should bring you into templates that connect with that particular type. so when you click goal setting it should bring you right to the goal setting templates in canva and you can look through all of the goal setting templates that canva has same thing with student planner when you click there it's going to bring you into student planner templates so I am going to set the timer for about three minutes. We'll see how we do with three minutes. And I just want you to click through and maybe find some different templates that you like. You can, when you find a template that you like, you can star it. And just by hovering over the template and clicking the little yellow star, and those should end up over here in your starred template. So you can go back to those later and spend more time designing them or customizing them. The next slide over has activating prior knowledge templates. And so you can look at the whiteboards and the brainstorm whiteboard presentations and the um, brainstorming templates and mind maps and look through some ideas for that as well. So this is just your explore time. I'm gonna set the timer, like I said, for about three minutes, and then we're gonna come back together and um, share some of the templates that we found. And I am here for questions. So I'm just gonna set the timer here on the bottom of my screen. And um, if questions come up, please ask, and I will be happy to answer them. Tisha, we have a question <laughs> straight away. Um, so I love it. Natasha has asked, if you're sharing a template for students to complete on their own, how do you see the mm -hmm. student responses? Do you set up a classroom and the students are linked to your classroom? Are you then able to go into each student account? So it all depends on what learning management system that you are all using. And, and remind me, Abigail, is it is it Google it's Classroom bit, or is it? It's a bit of a mix of Google Classroom okay. and Teams. However, after okay. our last session, I did do a couple of short tutorials on how to share Canva templates in both Google Classroom and Teams. So I might just find those links and pop them in um, if that's helpful as well. Um, but we do have lots of, well, another question about Google Classroom and assignments. So if you're yes. able to elaborate, that would be great. Absolutely, I'd be happy to. And there are, um, there are resources uh, that show kind of step-by-step -step videos and in one of the resources, it's called the District Hub, and I've, I've given that to you in this participant guide as at the very end, you will be able to see all of the different learning management systems and how they integrate with Canva and how you can set up that assignment workflow because it is slightly different depending on which one you use. But if I am in an assignment, so if I am in, um, 
if I'm in this presentation and I go to share and the share button doesn't matter what design you're creating in Canva, the share button is always going to be up on the top right. We right now are in the design editor. When I click on that share button, I have lots of sharing options. And when you go down to the very bottom here where it says more, you can click and find so many more options than, that show, than what shows on that first page. And I can simply type in the word Google and Google Classroom is going to pop up. When I click Google Classroom, I'm gonna be able to continue. And if your Google is connected, it is going to go right in to your Google Classroom. You're gonna be able to select your class you're gonna be able to select create an assignment. So this should look very familiar to you if you're already using Google Classroom. And then it is gonna bring you right into that assignment. And notice right here that here is the template link. So every student is going to get a copy of that assignment that now they're gonna be able to engage with. You can give instructions and assign it. You can even schedule it to go out at a certain time. And then you will be able to, um, you will receive that assignment and then you will be able to give feedback on their finished, their finished um, template, whatever they, whatever you've asked them to create. Okay, perfect. Did you find some fun templates? I would love to know what, what kinds of templates that you found. And one thing that's kind of fun about Canva is that I think is a really great use of the Canva whiteboard is that you can embed things. And so what you can do when you find a template that you like, so let's say I liked this, um, this classroom news template. I can go in and when I go into the share button, I can click view only link and copy that. And then when I go back to my board, my collaborative board that I am on, I am going to be able to paste that link in to my board. So I can click on Control V and it should paste in. There it is. So now I can, it comes in and then I can make it smaller and I can share it. So what I think, what I really love about this embedding in a Canva whiteboard is think about your students who create the, a video or create an infographic and they turn it into you through Google Classroom and you get to see it and you get to see their creativity and you grade it. However, they might not have the opportunity to showcase it to all of their students. And when students create something, they're proud of it and they want others to see it. And so by going in and having them copy their view only links into a whiteboard, now you've created this gallery walk where now all of these creations that your students have made are now all in one place for you to be able to, to see and share. And so I think that that just has so much potential to be able to do that. So um, I love that you have found some great things. I see a well-being mind map. I see a road, a future a project, future roadmap. I see another uh, mind map. I love it. Now, if you, um, so I see that this, this don't have a permission to see this design. Make sure that when you are sharing things that if you have this lockdown that only you can access, then no one else is gonna be able to see it. So just always make sure that your access is opened to the, whoever um, you want it to be opened to. You can make those choices here. Ooh, I have it tracker, I love it, that's great. Lots of great templates found. Keep, keep sharing, I love seeing what you have come up with and what I want to do, oh, there's a vision board. Fantastic. Brainstorming mind map. So what I want you to be thinking about is as we end this session, I want you to think about what journey you would like to go on and what you want to be able, what you want to create from here when we leave each other today, what you want to be cre creating until we see each other again next month. We have two learning adventures. We have a digital notebook. 
So if you would like to put together a digital notebook for your students that might include those planning pages, maybe those habit trackers, those goal setting sheets, you can choose that path. If you would like to focus on more of a whiteboard type activity and really work on finding ways to activate prior knowledge with your students, you might want to choose that route. And you can think about maybe some of those templates that you just explored, you might want to use as a starting point for this creation. There's only three rules, get creative, sky is the limit, share your creations with others. And so when we come back next time, you'll have an opportunity to share your creations with each other. And we also always ask for help. You have my email. If you want to reach out to me and you have questions, please do. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And then just know there are so many ways to level up your design. You can go in and you can add all sorts of elements from stickers, photos, videos, charts, tables, audio. You can also use the recording studio. For those of you who have not used the recording studio before, it is tucked into uploads. The fourth icon down, you can go in and record yourself, either a screencast or just your, your camera recording or a camera and a screen record together. Really powerful way to be able to not only visually communicate, but audibly communicate in Canva as well. You can also create a talking presentation and talk through your slides through the recording studio, or you can go up to share, and in the more menu, you are going to find present and record right here. You can embed other designs into your current design. So you can take those links, maybe a YouTube video or another resource from another site and embed it into your designs. You can access all of the stock photography in Canva and then know that this draw tool is pretty amazing. I can draw directly on a design. There is even this magic feature where if I hold my line together, it's going to pop that circle into a perfect circle. It'll do that with a heart. It'll do it with a square. The trick is you have to hold it in place. It will do it with a line and a star. So you'll have to play with this, but think about annotation, um, bringing in an excerpt of text and having students annotate, having students work out a math problem and then going into the, the recording studio and explaining how they solved that math problem. Sketch noting by combining doodles and text together. There's infinite options when we can bring in those digital, um, when we can bring in that draw tool as well. So, so many ways to kind of, to take that, design to the next level. Each of these is going to show you how you can walk through the process of creating your digital notebook, or you can go through and you can create that whiteboard activity, whatever you choose. And then we, um, we, don't, we are just short on time right now, but I want you to think about, um, you know, after we leave this session, what do you want, which one do you want to do? And maybe spend some time working together um, maybe if you are, any of you are in the same teams or at the same schools, you can maybe plan together and idea share together. And then I have left you all sorts of resources. So there are videos that the design school has created. There are design school courses. So for those of you who came in and you were the ones and the twos just getting started, there is a great teacher course, and there is a great student course in Canva that you can do at your own pace. There are also great cheat sheets. So if you want to leverage some of the quick resources to be able to um, find the editor shortcuts and some of the special ways to, to move around a little quicker in Canva, you can access those. And then there are teacher design playbooks that are going to just allow you to access some really great lesson ideas and teaching resources for the classroom and lots of articles here too. So I've left you with lots and lots of resources to explore. There's an amazing teachers community on Facebook. And so if you click this link right here, you're gonna be able to join that community. And then this is the district hub that I was talking to you about that has all of those resources. If you want to learn more about how to find that assignment workflow and integrate with a learning management system, all of your teacher resources are here as well. So this is a great 
site also to bookmark and have on the ready so that as you have those questions, you'll be able to find them. And then we also always love to hear your feedback. So there is a feedback form there if you click that link on that second to last page. And um, that is it for this session. We have, um, I am so impressed with all of your ideas. I love looking at this and just seeing all of the sticky notes, seeing all of the idea sharing. And I know that you are all gonna create amazing learning experiences for your students. And I hope that you come back next month for session two, where we are going to be exploring, capturing and demonstrating student learning, which is so, so many options there, and also discussing reflection. And we'll get to share the designs that you created as well. So thank you so much. And thanks again, Abigail, always for, for moderating and bringing these amazing teachers together. Thank you so much, Tisha. And thank you for all those resources that you provided for us. Um, they're amazing. I hope everyone that's been able to join us today or those that are watching later is able to have a look at those and think about um, hopefully sharing something with the group next time we meet. The next session is on the 31st of August, so not quite a month away. Um, and it's a little <laughs> bit shorter than the hour. Um, so hopefully we, we are able to fit everything in. But once again, thank you everyone for making the time and I'm sure everyone has picked up something um, to help them use Canva with their students. <laughs>